Morning all, I'd like to show you a very interesting and sweet game this morning of Nicholas Rosalimo against Ivan Romenko played in Bad Gastein 1948. So Nicholas playing white played e4 after c5 sin defence, knight f3. Knight c6 is often an invitation for the Sicilian Sveshnikov variation if white plays d4 but uh, Rosalimo was famous for his bishop b5 and often this is sometimes called the anti Sveshnikov this bishop b5 and uh, it's one of the reasons when you play uh, Sicilian Sveshnikov you've really got to be booked up on, on this now bishop b5 but uh, the Rosalimo system is another name for this obviously because Rosalimo won so many games with it and in this game let's say g6 was played which is one of the best moves in the position after castling bishop g7 it seems entirely logical black's d4 control rook e1 which at the moment doesn't seem uh, as though it's doing that much is it just allowing the bishop to go back or is there another intention you might also think c3 and d4 that like a Roy Lopez uh, yesterday um, we saw uh, a master game where this d4 instead was played instead of c3 d4 uh, so let's see how this goes knight f6 and actually in this game we see knight c3 being played so okay is white going for a d4 was he playing for e5 perhaps and later this knight could be useful on c3 controlling that d5 square but black stops white from playing d4 now by playing knight d4 himself white now plays e5 which is awkward for black to meet actually if knight g4 for example then that's a bit of a loose piece maybe knight takes d4 we could do a brief check in the second pass Black played actually knight g8, and now we see d3, and black grabs this light square bishop. And often, this exchange of bishop and knight, however it comes about, often weakens black on the dark squares as a side effect. Now, here, black cannot play e6 because of knight d6, so he logically tries to evict this knight. Me. A big surprise there. I wonder if you can guess what white played in this position if I give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, he plays knight d6 check, really making use of this rook. So, material versus quality versus time. What does this bring white? Well, there is a time element and a quality element in relation to king safety. Let's see, black takes, it's best, uh, well, king f8 seems a bit uh, defeatist, so he takes. So what's the idea here? In this position, actually, well, this is very, very tempting to take on d6, but uh, bishop g5 was actually played, which is another very powerful move here. What can black do? Doesn't want to play knight e7, ed, splat. So he, he moves the queen to a5, and then we see ed6, ed6 check, king f8. Okay, we have a situation where white bought some quality and time. He's, he's offered material and, and got quality and time. What, is, what does white actually want to do here? There's uh, a very, very uh, powerful move played in the game, and there's possibly another move on the second pass, which another move or two which computers like here. It's a very, very strong position already. Um, Black's pieces here are not really helping the king at the moment. This piece huddle uh, is all a bit disconnected from the rest of Black's position. In fact, the queen over here is a bit isolated as well. It's blocked by its own pawn from having influence over the king side at the moment, which might be critical. So I wonder if you can guess uh, what white played actually in the game here. 
if I give you 10 seconds starting from now okay well it might be tempting to play just queen e2 and we'll check that out in the second pass but white plays an even more dramatic move rook e8 check gaining even more quality and time giving up even more material so he's given up a knight and now he's giving up a rook so what's going on here the king's drawn out for this check now e2 queen e2 check king f8 and now bishop e7 check bringing the king to e8 unless the king uh, wants to be um, in trouble in another way which will check knight e7 um, will check in the second pass but uh, black decided to play king e8 and here there's a slightly surprising uh, finish here black is quite helpless with that king in the center um, okay way ahead in material but what does white play in this position if I give you 10 seconds starting from now it's not just the move you should find here it's the follow-up move in particular though which makes this so powerful in concept okay the move is bishop d8 check and it's a double attack it's attacking the queen as well so if the king moves just take the queen so the king takes and now I hope you found the follow-up move well or you can find it here if I give you another few seconds here beautiful follow-up move showing how helpless black is this pawn is acting as another attacking piece really in this position so what does white play in this position okay it's funny how a move like knight g5 is so powerful as it was yesterday in the Eric Hansen game that master game yesterday but knight g5 here is also pretty pretty destructive uh, black's a little bit overloaded if he tries to um, well in the game goes to defend f7 but now just queen e7 is mate supported by that pawn so a, a sweet little miniature under 20 moves this game and um, this game is one of those featured in um, Jessica Fisher Queen's excellent uh, video first part of the series on Nicholas Rosalimo <clears throat> which I'll give the link in the description really fantastic biographical video and this is one of the sweet games featured let's uh, just check in the second pass uh, some alternatives and stuff so Bishop b5 it's a system I really hated playing against as black myself when I wanted to play Sveshnikov and so just leaving the bishop to be taken in this game was pr was pretty powerful so knight c3 is actually liked here by the engine as well as well as e5 at the moment so we see e5 here I think black might have already kind of gone wrong maybe should castle if we did a reference check here possibly knight d4 is slightly controversial because of this e5 um, if a reference check is found okay finding some games now casting is the usual move 100 sorry 344 games now a6 only 17 knight d4 75 percent for white is not very good reputation knight d4 uh, so casting is the usual move uh, under knight d4 uh, it's um, usually white winning really from this position basically okay so we see e5 knight g8 and now the move d3 uh, so what is white actually threatening with d3 or a4 and bishop g5 if e6 uh, I think there's now knight e4 on e6 because <clears throat> white 
has this dark square pressure in any case in this position e6 no maybe knight e4 knight b5 pardon me bishop f4 is better for white and there's a dark square grip uh, which is unpleasant so for example knight e7 can take here maybe now knight e4 is a nice dark square grip so let's let's go back so after d3 we see knight takes b5 knight takes b5 and the engine really likes white here uh, this natural looking move a6 to kick the knight back unfortunately is going into knight d6 which the engine absolutely loves uh, so on king f8 black is just worse really knight e4 what are the frets here on the c-pawn for a moment so if b6 this kind of position is going to be nice for white there's, there's a nice grip central pressure it looks very pleasant unpleasant for black okay so knight d6 that's taken um, now we see bishop g5 which is I mean, apparently the most in, one of the most incisive moves in fact the natural e takes d6 is nowhere near as good apparently because of king f8 so what what's the difference here on bishop g5 here ah there's bishop f6 and it's nothing it's amazing what one little finesse here it's so p much more powerful to play bishop g5 because there's no bishop f6 resource in existence in this position but there is after ed and that's kind of weakness of the last move created by this this move order if you play ed6 here the move order itself has a weakness of the last move it's giving black access uh, to use f6 defensively it's amazing in this position well it's slightly surprising perhaps there's absolutely nothing it seems if best play so bishop g5 keeps white's attacking uh, prospects going queen a5 now check and now actually the engine picks up on another technical move here rook e8 was the move played but actually queen e2 threatens a mate on e8 pretty sure that's queen e8 threatened so and actually it's difficult for black to defend here if uh, knight e7 what is a mate in five here Uh, well we can just go with this simple looking line bishop h6 mating uh, black's only got desperate defense there so this uh, how would we def how would black possibly defend other other alternatives here for queen e2 uh, if well queen e8 is just desperate so there's actually a uh, queen e2 does seem uh, pretty crushing uh, given this combinational blow after knight f6 just play queen e7 as we've seen uh, so that that does seem absolutely crushing uh, no other real alternative bishop d4 we can play check okay this is slightly different now in this position but here it's still absolutely crushing with knight e5 so we're threatening queen f7 mate in one now if that's taken check and black here curiously in this variation is also absolutely defenseless after f6 well if you look at black's pieces they're really kind of cut off from the black king this has really cut off these defensive resources so white can finish with taking very painful check now, if King G8, that's that's absolutely hopeless. Queen F6, we're framing Rook E8. Um, so that's that's leaving Black absolutely helpless. And if King H6 here, we can take here, and we've got now a threat, I believe, of Check and Rook E7. And Black again is helpless. That's the threat, basically. You might think, well, isn't there a defensive resource like say C4 to to guard H5? Here, just taking is is very good. It's it's still just absolutely hopeless. The exchange up and these pieces are not helping, and actually, Black's been uh, 
forcibly mated soon. White's uh, threatening h7. It's, it's hopeless here. Um, another defensive try here. Queen d8. There's rook e7. And if we try and defend, say, g8, like, for example, rook g8, there's queen h4, mate. So it's it's all pretty hopeless in this line as well, queen e2. But uh, I think this is this is cuter in many respects. Rook e8 check. Giving up more material for, for quality and time. And we see bishop e7, the king being drawn back to e8. And then this this very, very cruel sequence where knight g5 is so powerful. In this position, uh, yeah, if king f8, we just take the queen. Bishop takes a5. So just knight g5 is actually a force in four. Knight g5. So that's nothing uh, black can do here. F seven is just absolutely helpless. It's funny, but uh, so in you know knight h six queen e seven. Okay, I hope you uh, enjoyed this game. And it just shows that it's, it's really really dangerous. This bishop b five stuff against the Sicilian. Um, it's uh, very very popular nowadays. As well. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.